Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. I'm your host, Rich Moser, joined by EIU softball coach Kim Schutte. And, Coach, last week we talked about you weren't sure if you were going to have a chance to, to get the games in, you guys. Mother Nature had been kind of playing tricks with you guys in terms of getting home games in, and you guys finally got three in, and they were three good ones for you. Yeah, um, a lot of people did a lot of hard work to get that field ready, including our girls rolling snow off the field and uh, the grounds crew, and uh, they were bound to determine anything, any way to get those games in and be able to play. And then we came out on top, which is bonus. Now, you guys played Murray State. You guys were earlier in the week supposed to play Butler in a doubleheader over there. Evidently, they didn't have enough time to get their field ready. So you guys had a, had a week off. But I know as coaches and players, you get used to, oh, we may play, we may not play. But you guys have kind of haven't been able to get in a rhythm the last two weeks of are you going to play or are you not going to play? Yeah, I think um, it's been kind of hard, but uh, we talk a lot about that, so it's not a surprise. And we talk a lot about being tough and about what might happen and prepare to play. I think if you're always ready to play, you're good. But the minute that you think or you assume things are going to cancel and then all of a sudden we play, we're in trouble. So we talk a lot about that and a lot about toughness. Um, and they came out ready to fire. They're excited to be at home at Glen Williams Field. Okay, and you guys will play at Glen Williams Field a couple more times. We'll talk about some of the upcoming games you have here a little bit later. But going back to talking about the Murray game, you guys picked up three wins. You swept them, continue to keep yourself in first place in, in the conference standings in this new divisional format. But not only were the wins big to keep you in first, anytime you can win a series against somebody in your own division, that's going to be big. Absolutely, and Murray the weekend before had beat Jack State and had beat Tech 4-0. Um, they were playing pretty well, and that first game, it was a pitcher's duel. It was one nothing battle, um, two good pitchers going at it, and then we came out on top. Uh, and then on Saturday, we got our sticks going a little bit. So um, it, was, it was a nice weekend, and a lot of contributors. That was my, my biggest thing was it wasn't that one, two, three, four, or the same similar people. It was that one through nine, and that's what we talked about after the after the weekend. Is we had so many contributors, whether it be pinch hitters or pitchers helping pitchers, or our one through nine batting order. We felt like there wasn't a lull in our batting order. And knock on wood, I hope that continues. Now you talked about that getting the sticks going a little bit. Is that sometimes a little bit difficult? I know hitters have to adjust to seeing a lot of times the backdrop and you've been inside the field house a, a large portion of the year to hit it's probably really the first concentrated time that you've been out on the field is that maybe part of the reason that it took the hitters maybe a day or two to adjust to not only the pitching they were facing but the surroundings as well that could be um you know i think in life you can think of any excuse you want and you can make anything into excuse that you want or you can look at the glass is full or the glass is half full um, being in the field house it's not the easiest to see so our players joke about when we go outside, it's like seeing an HD. It's like a whole new ball game, and the ball actually is much easier to see. So I think being inside gets them tougher, and um, no matter what, at the end of the day, they are ready to go and put it together. Now, fast forward to this week, you guys, because you, you've lost some games due to Mother Nature and some other things over the course of the season, you added a, added a series this week. You're going to play over at St. Louis early in the week, and then your game you already had scheduled against SIU on Thursday, and then you get back in the league play playing, I think, Jacksonville State and Tennessee Tech. No, I'm sorry, yes. Belmont, Tennessee State this weekend. Yes, yes. Um, we're excited to have – well, I know the coaches are excited to have some midweek games. And as you mentioned before, we're trying to get in the rhythm of off practice play, play, off practice play, play, and something like that. So we're really looking forward to these midweek games to, one, keep things going, but also get some other kids a chance, um, get some pitchers, some more innings, um, and see what we've got at St. Louis and then back at home on Thursday. They, they talk a little bit about pitching there. In baseball and softball, it's a little bit different in terms of the fact that in pitching, a lot of times for baseball, midweek games are put in there to get guys work that aren't going to pitch during weekend series that are trying to develop. Softball may be a little bit different in terms that your, your star pitcher really could pitch every game of the season. So as a coach, when you play those midweek games, is it to fine-tune some things for your star pitcher or is it an opportunity for some other people to actually get the circle? Sure, I think it's a little bit of both for us this week. Um, we want Madea to start, we want Robinson to start a game, and then we want to keep Menega going. Um, Menega, I, I look to her to be in relief both games against Slu and then start the current ball game. That's the plan as of today. Um, who knows what will happen. But yeah, you want to keep what's rolling, rolling. But absolutely, we want Madea and Robinson to get 
some more bulk of those in. Now, the other thing that you guys, you'll, get, you'll go back into this format and, and kind of looking at the schedule, I, I could be wrong, but I think this is kind of how it plays out. It seems like you're playing your four games against the other opponent one or the other division one week, and then you come back and play a three-game series against your division and then back against the other division. That's going to be the case this weekend when you play Tennessee State and Belmont. Are, are there different – I know a lot of times when you when you talk other like maybe professional sports, they say divisions play different styles. I don't know that that's really the case so much in in softball, but you're going to see two teams, one in Belmont that you really are not familiar with at all. Right, right. Um, Tennessee State and Belmont both kind of have an aggressive style that kind of have free swingers at the plate, um, and you honestly never know what you're going to get. Um, and that's challenging to play against a team like that. Belmont just beat Jack State, and Jack State's always a good team. Um, and Tennessee State has been really competing with high scoring games. So our goal is to always win the first game, win the first game, get things going, um, and then kind of see what our competition is. We've talked a lot about in the past what's we'll happened with competition, but you're right, Belmont, we. We tried to play last year, we got rained out. We don't have a whole lot about them, except we saw them at a tournament earlier this year. But Tennessee State, we have oodles of sky airports, so hopefully those sky airports will help us. Now, you talked about those two teams, and you're going to get in the format, and I know you kind of want to keep it rolling there a little bit. This weekend, Southern Illinois on Thursday, <laughs> at 4 o'clock start out here at Williams Field, and then the doubleheaders at noon on Saturday. It, since you have so many games, do you tinker with the lineup a little bit, or, or have you seen some things that, that you kind of want to tinker with going into the weekend? Um, I think midweek we'll probably mess things a little bit, um, see what we've got, see if some maybe surprises happen, and hopefully get a couple kids going a little bit more. As far as this weekend, I have no idea. You know as much as I do. I know what's been working, um, but I'm always looking for surprises and some good performances at practice as well as good performances on the games to get some other kids, you know, help them earn their shot. All right, Coach. Well, best of luck in all those games. Hopefully people, the weather looks like it's going to be nice for the weekend. Hopefully people will come out and see us at Williams Field. Four o'clock on Thursday against Southern, and then a pair of doubleheaders this weekend, noon against Belmont on Saturday yes. and Tennessee State on Sunday. You're going to get them mixed up as I go through the year here. I'm going to flip the weekends, but you're going to play all four or play four games over the weekend, two against each of those teams on those two days. Coach, best of luck, and we will talk to you next week. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back with this week in EIU Athletics. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther Athletics. Baseball is now 0-8 in the OVC as they fell in a three-game series at Jacksonville State, 3-2, 5-2, and 2-1. Softball is now 9-1 in the OVC as they swept a three-game series at Williams Field over Murray State, 1-0, 7-4, and 4-1. Outdoor track with two days of competition at the SIU Spring Classic in Carbondale, Illinois. And EIU posted six first-place finishes. Men's tennis with three matches last week. They lost 4-0 at Belmont. They won 4-1 over Tennessee State in a non-league matchup. And then in the OVC match against Tennessee State, EIU won 6-0. EIU is now 2-2 two two in the OVC. Women's tennis won both their matches last week, 4-0 at Belmont and 6-0 at Tennessee State. They're now 4-1 in the OVC and 9-3 overall. Now here's what to watch for this week. On Wednesday, prior to the airing of this show, several Panther athletic teams in action. Men's and women's tennis at SIU Edwardsville at 2 o'clock. Baseball is at Coach's Stadium to take on Illinois State. Softball is at St. Louis for a doubleheader. For results and stats of all of these contests on Wednesday, as well as the men's golf results from the Arkansas State invite earlier this week, go to EIUPanthers.com. On Thursday, softball is at Williams Field to take on Southern Illinois. On Friday, track begins competition at the Miami, Ohio Relays. And baseball begins a three-game series at Coaches Stadium against Murray State. On Saturday, several Panther athletic teams in action. Track wraps up competition at the Miami, Ohio Relays. Men's and women's tennis are at Jacksonville State starting at 10 o'clock. Softball with a doubleheader at Williams Field against Belmont. And baseball with their second game of their three-game series against Murray State at Coaches Stadium. On Sunday, men's tennis is at Tennessee Tech at noon. Softball with a doubleheader at Williams Field against Tennessee State. And baseball wraps up their three-game series against Murray State at Coaches Stadium. On Monday, women's golf begins a two-day run at the Tennessee State Invitational. On Tuesday, women's golf wraps up competition at the Tennessee State Invitational. Women's tennis is at Darling Courts as they take on UT Martin at 215. 
Panthers softball and baseball are up in Champaign-Urbana as both teams will take on Illinois. Softball at 4 o'clock and baseball at 6.05. And next Wednesday, baseball is at Coach Stadium to take on Illinois College at 2 o'clock. For Panthers Sports Talk, I'm Ramin Kabasyun. Welcome back to Panther Sports Talk. We're now joined by EIU baseball coach Jimmy Schmitz. And coach, you guys have been on the road uh, again. I know you've been road warriors this year. Part of it by design early in the year, and then the way the league schedule's gone this year, you guys opened the first couple of weekends really on the road to play conference action. Yeah, I mean, six of the seven weekends on the road. Um, some of it we're used to doing. Uh, it's obviously hard on the guys, but being back home now, it's going to be nice. The weather's going to be nice, and hopefully we can kind of get into a, a good rhythm. Um, you know, we played well at Jackson State, um, but, you know, they're a, good, they're a good team, and offensively we didn't swing the bat, so hopefully we get started here Wednesday versus Illinois State. Now, you talked about that on Wednesday. You guys play Illinois State, a team that you came off of where you actually played a weekend series uh, a couple or actually the, the previous weekend, so you're a team you're somewhat familiar with from, from a scouting report, but you're probably going to see different pitching, I would think, with a midweek setup as opposed to what you kind of saw during the weekend rotation. Yeah, I mean, they threw really good arms against us. Uh, Midweek-wise, we don't know. Uh, we're going to go with our guys. Normally, midweek, we try to play some other people, but we got to find a, a starting nine, and we got to find a middle infield that's going to be consistent for us. Um, we're going to pitch some guys that haven't pitched in a while. Um, we have some additional injuries or nagging injuries to some pitchers. So uh, Jaden Wittersheim, who's, who's struggled this year, is going to get the start. Uh, C.J. Martin, a freshman, is going to get some innings in. We got to, you know, we got to shore up some things. We feel good about obviously four or five arms, uh, but we want to get other guys in. Now you guys will head into this weekend. You guys play Murray State, a team in the, in the middle of the pack in, in the OBC standings and. As this, this goes, you guys still have a lot of baseball left in front of you. You really want to play three conference series so far. And so I know as a coach, you've, you've done this for, for a while. How do you kind of keep the guys focused that, you know, there's still an opportunity to, to, to win some games and win some series and, and make the conference tournament? Once you get into that, then anything's possible. Well, yeah, we talked about that a little bit on, on Friday after the, the hard loss on Thursday night. Um, you say all the cliches, you say all the right things. Um, we just got to play a little better baseball. And once we do that, then you can kind of get some kind of momentum and get into a winning streak like we did last year. Um, you know, we felt, like I said, pitching was phenomenal down in Jacksonville. Um, you know, defense, I think we made the right decision. But uh, Dane Sauer at shortstop, he played great on Saturday. So um, you, you try not to harp too much on it. Um, you know, it's it's some like I said, one game at a time and all that. But we, we just got to do a couple things a little better, um, and then we'll we'll see if we have a chance to make a run. Once we start playing better, um, you know, if we don't win as many games, then you know, then we just got to kind of look for next year. But right now, our guys played really well in Jacksonville. Three heartbreaking losses, um, but I thought they played really hard. I thought they really did what we wanted in most cases, and uh, we just came up short. And, you know, two of the three teams we played right now are, are league leaders in the conference. So, um, you know, we're gonna play people that we can knock down below us. Uh, so we win two out of three, or sweep a weekend, then we can see if we have something to play for. Now, when you, you talk about the teams that you're playing, I, I don't know how much you've really looked at Murray State so far. You, you kind of, I know you, you attack it as, as you get to it, but with midweek games, do you even focus on Murray State until until Thursday, or is that something that you and your staff meet with, meet on early in the week and kind of devise a game plan? Yeah, we, no, we meet on uh, Tuesday for the Wednesday game, and or Tuesday and then Thursday for Murray. Um, you know, we played against them many years. Obviously, they might have a new position guy or a new pitcher that we face, but we know what Rob does. Pretty much, uh, each coach seems to stick with their program. Um, you know, in, in the conference, I mean, you could tell. I mean, Austin P is really tough. Belmont's up there. Jay State's up there. I think Tech's uh, surprising people right now. Um, so there's kind of like two different. At least what I've seen on the standings is that four teams way up at top, and everyone else is in the middle or down below. So. Um, you know, that actually good where we're all going to be probably competing for the fourth or fifth slot at this particular point. Now, you guys will be back at home. You, like we talked about earlier in the show, you guys have been on the road a lot. But you, you were home a couple weeks ago. You kind of you, you talk about needing to get one game and get a little bit of a streak going. You got that against Southern Illinois a couple weeks ago. Came, the bats came out. You pitched well. That led into winning two out of three then at Illinois State. 
maybe some of that same type of magic could start this weekend with Illinois State. I guess those those things seem to go in cycles. When one guy's hitting, everybody's hitting. When one guy's pitching, everybody seems to be pitching. Yeah, and it really did. I mean, the southern wind was big, and when we come back home and then we get 10 inches of snow, and, um, you know, those are the breaks that have not gone well. But, um, yeah, being back home, looking at the weather for the next couple of weeks looks like it's going to give us a chance to be home. Uh, we've not practiced one day on our field, and. So it, everything's about confidence, and right now the guys are kind of in the mid-level. You know, it's not really it's not really down, but it's not really up. Um, but I really thought how we played Saturday, uh, defensively, pitching-wise, uh, things are coming together. We just have to get a couple more pieces going. Okay, now one, it'll be three o'clock game on Wednesday against Illinois State, and then you come back on Friday against Murray State at three, Saturday at one, and Sunday at one. I guess for. Like we said, we haven't been at home a lot this year. Maybe some guys for when people are coming out to watch the games to kind of, hey, look at that guy. He, I guess maybe even some of the young guys that are going to be around, names are going to hear the next couple of years. Well, I, you know, Caleb Howe, uh, left fielder, sophomore, Brant Volick, a sophomore, he's a uh, you know, freshman All-American last year, two of the young guys that have really been playing. Uh, you know, the new hitter for us is Trey Bobra, the first baseman uh, from Wisconsin, who's really up there in a lot of the offensive categories. Uh, and then, you know, Matt Borens, who pitched well on Saturday, sophomore, six foot seven right hander, who scouts are starting to get really excited about. So we do got some young guys. Um, we'll probably start playing a little freshman here. You'll get some other names down the road, but uh, uh, it's a little young team, but I think some new guys are going to do well. All right, Coach, well, best of luck out there. We will talk to you next week. A reminder, 3 o'clock on Wednesday against Illinois State and then the series against Murray State out at Coach's Stadium, 3 o'clock Friday, 1 o'clock Saturday and Sunday. Be right back on Panther Sports Talk. And we'll wrap up another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here in WIU with some of the highlights of the women's basketball season, which ended this past week with a second round WNIT loss at Illinois. Thanks for watching this edition of Panther Sports Talk, everybody.